If you explore the history behind World War I or scroll for 11 seconds through iFunny, you're bound to find information about the German Empire, a pseudo-Prussian monarchist entity and the last time Germany was respectable in the international community, except for in 2014. The German Empire was the culmination of German 19th century nationalism, quite possibly the most militaristically able state of the era. With that capability came rivalry, and as a result, colonialism arose in the 1880s, much to the dismay of a frustrated Otto von Bismarck. I'd be frustrated too if I had to babysit this guy. Now Germany's goals required a lot of things, and with planes not being invented yet, another ocean-capable method of transportation was necessary. You've seen the title of this channel. We're gonna be talking about boats. Now the British, they got lots of boats. It's sort of their shtick. Britain also has lots of colonies. It's also sort of their shtick. All right, so here's the situation. Germany is getting itself colonies, and they are sort of stepping on Britain's thunder. To add insult to injury, Kaiser Wilhelm II just visited the RMS Teutonic for the Spithead Naval Review. What was that? Not important. He was interested, and now he thinks ships might be worth a little more of Germany's attention. Britain's got herself some big ships, and they want more. Germany has got herself a few big ships, but it wants way more. To be more specific, Germany has colonies here, 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 and here. This colony is important because it's on some great lakes in Africa, remember that. Now time has passed, and Kaiser Willy has got himself some bigger ships, but for some reason, not enough to defend all of his colonies. He doesn't have that many, so it's kind of surprising. Now this Austrian royal was shot by a Serbian, resulting in Indians fighting for Britain and France to defend Belgium. And way down south, here is where it all begins. Here she is, German East Africa a colony of beauty, suppression, and Mount Kilimanjaro. Germany has plans, big plans, and they want to unite all of Central Africa under German dominion. To do so, they need to expand their sphere of influence so that when Bismarck's prophesied Great European War comes, they will be prepared to claim the land as spoils when they definitely, inevitably win. To do so, they need to industrialize their already existing colonies to compete economically in the region, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, they need transport ships on Lake Tanganyika, and that's where Graf von Goetzen comes in, named after the former governor of German East Africa, Gustav Adolf von Goetzen. I apologize if I butchered that, German is not my first language, as you probably can tell. Who wouldn't want to be named after this sexy beast? Look at him. Gorgeous. Now along this lake, they have a railway from the town of Dar es Salaam to the east coast of Lake Tanganyika. And in order to complete the route, they need a cargo slash passenger ship. So they tell the Meyer shipbuilders, who still build cruise ships to this day, to build this little speed demon, and then take her apart to ship to Hamburg via railway. 5,000 crates of the broken up vessel were brought to Dar es Salaam on three ships and were then loaded onto the brand new Central Line Railway for another long, tedious journey to the city of Kigoma. In 1914, they finally finished putting her together and she began her service on February 5, 1915, and they celebrated by immediately requisitioning her for the war. Now if there's anything you gotta know about German East Africa is that it's far from home, far from friends, and is surrounded by enemies. More specifically, the British and the Belgians. There's no way Germany could dominate the Indian Ocean, other than the SMS Emden, which is a video topic for another day. So Germany would have to find other places to plant security over its colonies. Enter the Graf Götzen. Germany had some 4-inch guns and one 3-inch gun lying around, everyone does these days. So they arm her and sent her off to defend the lake. And you know what? She did it. She really did it. She still functioned in the capacity of cargo and people carrying, moving troops and supplies, allowing for surprise attacks on allied positions along the lake. Because the allies didn't initially place priority on the lake, their own defense was lackluster, meaning SMS Götzen was curb stomping the allies. She also had two other German gunboats running the lake with her, SMS Kingani and Hedwig von Wismann, but they really had nothing on her. Now Britain couldn't allow this pattern of defeat to continue. What if they lose the war in Africa? It's their job to suppress millions of innocent Africans, not Germany's. They had to sink the Götzen and take back the lake. Two British armored motorboats were disassembled and made the exhausting journey from Britain to the Congo, and from there were taken by rail to the lake before being assembled and launched in Albertville as fast as possible. These two ships were the Mimi and the Toto, which is just bonkers that they genuinely named them that. It's funnier because initially they wanted to name them the HMS Cat and HMS Dog. It's like they were pressed for time, so they asked a four-year-old. The thing is, Mimi means kitty in French, and Tao Tao means doggy. The true pride of the British fleet. The gunboats sat waiting for the time to strike the Germans, and in December, they acted. In the Battle of Lake Tanganyika, the German ship Kingani was captured, Hedwig von Wismann was sunk, and the Götzen quickly fled the scene. 
She was now all alone on the lake and her dominance had vanished faster than the McRib. To add insult to injury, the Brits had converted the Kingani into their own gunboat called the HMS Fifi, still sticking to that awesome naming convention. With the battle going south, Germany put her attention elsewhere, and because they were a little too nervous to strike on their own, the Götzen sat in Kigomi Harbor. Belgium did establish an airbase nearby and tried bombing her, but it really went nowhere. Besides, it didn't really matter anymore. Germany had disarmed her for the most part, except for one gun left that was really only functional as an anti-aircraft gun. It wasn't an attack-capable vessel anymore but on the land, their campaign was getting better, faster, and stronger. They cut off Kagome from the Central Railway and were advancing deeper into enemy territory, leaving the Schutztruppe to defend the area. Side note, the Schutztruppe were the German African Corps. The city of Kigoma was under threat of being taken now too, so General Leto Vorbeck ordered the Götzen to be scuttled to prevent its capture. It was done carefully, as the Germans sort of expected to float her later on after they definitely inevitably win the war. Uh-oh. So the British did end up taking the city of Kagoma, and as you know, the whole Middle Africa campaign did not exactly go as planned for Germany. The war's over. Britain now owns Tanzania, calling it the Tanganyika Territory. In 1918, a Swede working for the Belgians on a British lake in Africa worked with his team offloading the extra weight from the Götzen and using cables to lift the vessel. They had partially succeeded to get her above the surface by 1919, and slowly moved her back to Kagoma. She wasn't floating yet, but they'd get there eventually. That was until a storm in 1920 moved and sank her again. Now the British finally get control of the city of Kagoma from the Belgians, and they take 1924 off to raise the ship. They succeed. They converted her back into a passenger-slash-cargo ship in 1926, and renamed her the Liemba. Was this all worth it? No. See, Liemba had been down for long enough that most of her equipment, including her boilers, now needed to be replaced. The entire cost of raising and refurbishing her was about 78,000 pounds. The Germans had spent an equivalent of 36,000 just to build her. The MV Liemba ran her route down the lake from 1927 all the way to today. With Tanzania's independence, she was moved around from company to company a bit, had a diesel engine installed, cool stuff. Liemba's biggest change was in 1977, when some Danish guys added a ton to her deckhouse, renovated her cabins, and improved the overall efficiency of the vessel. Not exactly the most interesting development, but you get it. Today she functions in a very important role of transporting resources from Tanzania to Zambia along the lake. It's a vital position in the area, and the ship is apparently very beloved among the locals. Now why do I tell you all this? It's boring. It's a little historic combat cargo ship. Well, she accidentally became the only ship of the Kaiserliche Marine, the great German Imperial Navy, to still be in service today. She also is the oldest running passenger ferry in the world. Neat stuff. I don't know, just a little neat tale to spice up your week. So what did we learn? Always a good question.